something real quick. Hopefully real quick. Let's see. But let's fix the screen on my 2014 Toyota Tundra. saw that there were no but looks like some screws unplugged some plastic pop not sure how it broke i mean it just happened right but um yeah so the bluetooth isn't very cooperative but anyway um we should be able to fix this as it looks as though it is just the digitizer. The screen's working behind it. All that seems good. Of course, you get no, can't do anything with it uh, with the touch screen. And there's a lot of controls you can't use without the touch screen. So I've changed uh, just about every iPhone or iPad I've had, either the screen, the battery, something's gone wrong with it, taken it apart, and had mostly um, positive experiences fixing those. So I ordered a new digitizer to go on this. So it should work. We should just be able to end up pulling the radio, which I think is all of this. We'll have to figure out what we need to take off to get to it, get it out of here, and disassemble the actual radio itself just to pull off the digitizer put the new digitizer in and hopefully have a new working radio for $55 off Amazon as opposed to putting a new one in that won't work with all of my controls even if you pay for the extra um, the unit that lets it talk to these you still lose some functionality supposedly um, so anyway Let's get to it, let's take it apart and um, see what we're working with. Okay, I feel a little dumb on that one. Um, it's out, it's on because it's November 4th and it's still hot and I'm in here sweating without the AC. So I haven't unplugged anything but have it out. Um, finally, but with the AC going a little bit. So there were four bolts and I was trying not to get in the way of the camera to look under there. I saw the two, pulled the two and started trying to pop the top clips off the radio, which are right there and right there and both of them stayed in when you kind of pry it sideways rather than up um, pulling it this way um, but had to turn the camera off look in there a little bit better and saw that there were two farther back pop those uh, pulled those and it popped right out so we'll get the connections unplugged and just as expected they all look as though you know you're only gonna fit in one place for the various plugs and um, cables we'll get it plugged in we'll get it on the bench and then we're gonna have to take apart uh, up here somehow we'll just figure that out as we go but looks like some screws unplugged some plastic to pop off and hopefully we'll get access to that digitizer and replace it put it all back in and um, maybe have a working radio that doesn't have a shattered digitizer, which again, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> All right, let's get moving. Let's see what we're working with here. <laughs>
make sure to know the screws especially if they're different but I tend to try to put them back in the same spot so I just configure over on the side somewhere the screws in the shape that they came out of the device I'm taking apart obviously if you're taking apart an iPhone or something sometimes they come with a little um, printout of all the parts and they give you a place to put them but I tend to just do it that way on the side. let's see here Good measure, let's go ahead and pull this one because I don't really know where it goes. It's too tight to get the full one in there at the angle and get around that. So just use a little bit of pliers. None of these are in there very tight and then loosen it with our hands from there. Work down to the bottom, just kind of pick a spot and start holding pressure. I tend to just hold pressure on some of the retainers and pop in the others and you'll find they'll start giving on their own without having to put a lot of force. Just, just a little bit of pressure here as I release the um, retainers below it. And there you go. Not that difficult. Let's see. Inside, looks like, yep, we're free. All right. Let me flip it over this way. Bring it in here, because I think this should give us access to the ribbon cables. There we go. So, move that back and looking to release the ribbon cables without getting in your way. Same thing, I just try to do it gently using fingernails. I don't think there's, is it like a computer? Yeah, so it's like a computer. Um, and the, a lot of other monitors. There's no like plastic connector on the end of the ribbon cable. You just lift up on the plastic retainer on the board, on the printed circuit board, and pop it off and they come off. There we are. The uh, screen digitizer display is free. Let's move this over to the side. And all right, we need to get in here, which looks like I've got a, a ground, some ribbon cables. I'm going to pull these four and hope that it comes out as one. But first, so we so far we've got two ribbon cables. This will make a, a third. And then the ground is free. And unfish it so it fishes through through here it's free and I'll pull this ribbon cable from this side and that one might be our um, digitizer but let's pull these four screws here and see what is under There's one small set of pliers. Pull these, same thing. Knoll them over here. Out of the way where you're not going to actually bump them while you're moving this thing around. So it's kind of like um, kind of like drawing, kind of like art. If you're set up where you can move the piece around, um, for me that works a little better. Than rather than trying to work across stuff, I can keep moving it to fit where I need it and I tend to break less things. At least that's the idea. So I want to make sure my 
screws and bolts and everything I pull off is well out of the way. And like on here, I've got it on this marble stone that I use for leather work that I'm not gonna bump at all. All right, what did we free up there? So this, that is the digitizer. So I think I need to pull this so I can get to that cable on the digitizer. So what I'm gonna do with this one is leave them in there and leave these screws in the metal shield. So then I can just pull the shield up and everything's in the right place because I don't want to put anything of the wrong length back into this printed circuit board with the LCD screen under it in case I apply the pressure in the wrong place. Uh, can't say I've never done that before. So let's see how we did there. Alright, I'll do the other screws out of the way and put them in the general location so I can put them right back. I'm gonna get this thing free. And over here. And then over here. Like so. We are just click in under here at the bottom. Alright, should be. Let's see. Metal against metal. And just, yeah. Take the screwdriver with the flathead and just rotate it lightly. And I'm against metal against metal not against the printed circuit board and we break that free. So then again, I'll put the screws back in their location and put this hole. Um, metal cover to the side. There we go. Now we get over here. Again, out of the way. Put the screws back in the middle. So here's what should be the digitizer ribbon. Everything else appears to be free. So I'm gonna pull this leave that on but pull the entire lcd out we've got some cleaning to do um, i'll go in get some alcohol i'll blow it off with some air so i don't scratch anything get some alcohol wipes and just lightly clean that where that glass is cracked in there and any dust or since it's a 2014 so it's um used <laughs> to say the least, but uh, we'll clean that off on the side. I'm gonna put it over here on my leather so that I don't um, scratch anything. And then our LCD. So on the LCD, I mean, sorry, I keep I said LCD twice. On the digitizer, I don't feel any sticky tape. Like it was not, it didn't appear to be stuck to the LCD with anything. Um, get this printed board back in its proper location. Yeah, so there's nothing. There aren't any um, adhesives holding the digitizer to the screen, so I don't have to worry about that portion. Um, yeah, shattered digitizer. So hopefully Amazon has saved the day again. We shall see. Um, we got some, have some ad uh, adhesive 3M strips. I'll, I'll try to use them usually with these small things. And my fat fingers don't, don't do too well, but we'll see. And they already have some on the screen. So just giving me extras, I suppose. So we've got the, uh, okay, that ribbon cable's folded over, but I don't see any breaks in the circuitry. So all we can do is put it together and hope for the best on that. We know how to take it apart if we have to do it again. I've uh, had to do things multiple times before. So there you go. Appears to be the right size, should fit in here just like we had the other one all right so i'll get everything cleaned up and the plastic pulled off the inside and the outside because i'll have to pull the plastic off of the um the outside because if i don't it'll be wedged in between the, the plastic uh molding so get that cleaned up and then basically do the reverse of what we just did start plugging in the 
ribbon cables and um, this two layers as well I suppose yeah okay yeah <clears throat> the plastic protected on the top and then the digitizer on the underside interesting all right I'm gonna toss this get going with cleaning stuff up and come back and put it together okay from here let's let's get it screwed back in and then um, the ribbon cables which are always a lot of fun getting the little ribbon cables in um, so far things are going swimmingly um, these things usually aren't as bad um, as you think unless you start running your mouth and then drop the screw in a cavity all right so try that again screw on the Phillips finger on the screw and kind of guide it in position and there we go um, yeah it seems daunting you know you have to change a remember the, the buttons on the old iPhones I had to take an iPhone 4 apart to take the uh, put a new I think it was a button on that one I've done like I said, most every iPhone since the iPhone 3, 3G, 3S, whatever it was called, I've taken apart in some form or fashion. But my 4S, I just remember, it was every piece to get to whatever, whatever part went bad to keep the phone going just a little longer. These days, it's screens and batteries. But uh, that's when I figured this is doable because it's just a digitizer screen all right so that ribbon cable from the new um yeah our leads are good from the new digitizer open up the plastic fitting and that looks like what it looked like prior this ribbon cable from this board behind the lcd back into its slot Let's see, I'm going to kind of pry it up and do it this way so I have a little pressure to hold the ribbon cable in place and then close the plastic retainer. Pops back in. Nice. And the one on the far side is all just controls for the volumes and the apps and the settings and menus along the side. So there we are. We're seated, close it, and that leaves. Uh, calling it a ground, quite honestly. I'm not exactly what sure what this is. Because um, it's got a center, kind of like a coax cable, a center and a shielding. But, and I don't think I had to take this one off. There we go. Pop back in and put that, excuse me, under. Alright. So, the retainer, shield, and screws, because it'll pop out if I try to put it back in. Well, briefly, no one in position here. And, um, put it back in place. And I do have this clip, which went under this one. There we go. There, and then a little bit of pressure that we had to pry out. Pop it back in place. Nice. Alright. So, put the uh, shield back in, and screws back in. One, two, and just hand tight. I learned working on a uh, with a really very smart airplane mechanic a handful of years ago, 10, 15 years ago, maybe a little more. That one bolt that you're putting all your force in to get it tight, that one bolt's not holding 
that plane together. And the 90 you put in at the proper torque hold them in place, hold it together. So anyway, um, all right, we have ribbon cable seated, digitizer seated, other control ribbon, and uh, I'm gonna continue to call it ground for the moment. All in place, screws in, four on the top, four holding LCD, and we have a new screen. Isn't that fancy? So, let's put this back on the um, actual radio body and then put it back in the truck. Okay, let's put it back together and hope for the best. All right, there's a ton of plugs in the back of this thing, but like I said earlier, they all only fit in one location. So, let me just put each one back, one at a time, making sure they're seated well. And then, there, there, there. Let's see, I have, oh, I'm missing. I've got this one here. It's going to turn on quickly. It is hot. Right. So let's see. Everything appears to be in place. Don't see anything else. Right. Seated well. All of them are in. Let's just kind of push it back in position here. Oh, and I lost my hard rubber tire clip fall down. But yeah, the air conditioning going just a little bit. And test it before we um, need to test it before we uh, move on. Sorry. Start the car. Get a little air going. And let's see what we're working with. No more broken screen. Touch screen worked. Audio is off. Let's go to apps, setup, screen off, apps, message. All right, so there we are. Audio, CD. Source, turn it down. Nice. So, um, what else do we have? Weather. All right, yeah. Great. We're working. So now I'm going to um, pull it back out and find a little yellow clip that looks like one of these. I don't know if you can see it down here. There's two up here, one on each side, and I heard it fall. So I'm going to pull that back out and. Um, so I put that in the It's back, everything's put back together, popped back in place. And um, the four bolts are in, four bolts are in. Everything works, we can, uh, pretty responsive as well. That was on Amazon, 55 bucks. I'll uh, attempt to link to it, but you know, it's working just like it did when, when I bought it used. But So that's good, shattered screen. Replace just like an iPhone or any other little LCD with the touchscreen uh, digitizer. So, you know, I mean, you've got something broken, why not try to fix it? It was $55 on Amazon versus trying to find a used, new, to me, um, stock radio for, I don't know, they see them on eBay anywhere from 500 bucks, which is kind of absurd. Or just replacing it with something new, which is what I wanted to do or was planning on doing. That way I could make some other modifications in here but I'm not that worried but you know you're going to spend seven hundred dollars by the time you get the radio you could you could go cheaper but to get the radio that would do some stuff for the the kids in the back and still work with the majority of the controls on the steering wheel but again not all of them um you know it was worth to try to fix it if if what's the worst you're going going to do break it more it's already broken so you're either gonna have to get somebody to fix it or replace it and you learn something you get a little more confidence each time knowing that hey I can 
I can fix that. <laughs> Which also makes you a little more cavalier about poking it when it's um, not cooperating is kind of the trade-off if you know you can fix it it makes breaking it a little bit more palatable of course that's fairly juvenile and you don't want to but when it happens you know you can why not try hopefully somebody uh hopefully maybe this will help somebody again yeah so it's a toyota tundra 2014 without the um jbl part of the radio SR5, I uh, don't have a whole lot of features in this particular truck, but um, yeah, maybe that'll help somebody. If you have any questions, ask below and uh, I'll respond. Anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate it.